Hello everyone, I am Marie and I'm here with Martha and today we're going to talk about ski resorts because both Martha and me are very big snow fans. Are we avid, not? avid snowboarding and ski fans. Yes, we go every week. At, at least once, once a week, week if yes. not more. And I have been doing this almost for like five years. So my first two or three years I was skiing every day because I was also a ski instructor and then now I ski for fun more um, but still I try to go as much as I can. So we're specifically going to talk about the best ski resorts in Korea and we've selected three of them. Taiwan. Yes. And then we have Phoenix Park and, and Yongpyeong. Right. I think they're mostly they're the biggest ones. Yes, they're there. definitely the biggest. Like Yongpyeong has 28 slopes, Haiwan 18 and Phoenix Park 18 as well. So those are definitely the biggest resorts. So all these three slopes that we've talked about are in Gangwondo. And Gangwondo is a province of Korea and it is the, like if you have Seoul, it's the province next to... East, yes, east, east. By, east by the sea, where you have Sorak Mountains yes. and... Uh, yeah, kind of mount Tibet. mountainy, mountainy. Very, and area. it's also the coldest province of it Korea is. in winter. It is. Yes. Because they're deeper into like deeper into Gangwondo, they also have better quality snow because it's a bit colder than Seoul or the ski resorts around mm. Seoul. They they have a chance of having natural snow yes, sometime supposedly. Do, sometime during the season, whereas the ones near Seoul, like it's gonna be fake snow. I mean to be fair, Korea never really had a lot of snowfall during winter we get cold winters dry, uh, winters dry winters with very little snow so we're gonna compare these three ski resorts with each other and we're gonna talk about the slopes the facilities the lodging and transportation so first one Yongpyeong Marta you have a long history with Yongpyeong yeah because I I remember going there as a small child back in I don't know 1990 1995. It's definitely the oldest and the, the most renowned one. Like it looks like Yongpyeong kind of it looks a lot like it looked back in the 90s. I would even say I think it was built in the 80s so it's very 80s uh, uh, architecture with right. very dubious sculptures and <laughs> huts and weird right. things that you don't have an explanation They have for. alpacas on one of the slopes. But I have to say that there are coffee shops, there are places to eat, which you cannot say about some other resorts. Right. So, so in that sense, it was pretty good. And the food in the, in the cafeteria is pretty good. They have the longest slope of Korea is in Yongpyeong and I think I it's more than five or six kilometers long. Oh, wow. Yeah. So if it's oh, open, which is not always the case, it's yeah. a really nice because it's like a windy path. And is, it it, is it like an advanced slope or is it like a medium? No, it's not intermediate. very intermediate. Yeah. But it's just very long and it's like curved. That would, that would be awesome. There seems to be a tendency these days that they don't really open all the slopes anymore because they don't have natural snowfall. Well, that too. And I think also because of COVID, they don't really have that many visitors right. as they would during Normally. during the season. But if the slopes are open, I think they have very good, yeah, very good wide range of slopes. Um, transportation wise, like all the all these three resorts have shuttle buses and they're run by the same company. So transportation wise, it's pretty easy to get there. I mean, you, you have to take into the consideration that the site that you have to book your uh, bus seat is in Korean and its UX is not yes. the greatest. But, but once you get over yes. that and figure it out, it's pretty easy and straightforward. When it comes to the bus ride, I think Phoenix and Yongpyeong are pretty much similar distance. So I think two hours or two and a half hours, depending on traffic. Yeah, two hours, I think, going there and two and a half hours, three, coming back. Coming back. It, it's, you can do it in a day. To be, to be fair, you can do all of them yeah. in a day. You just have to know that you're going to sit on the bus two hours or three hours going. And right, or four, <laughs> depending on traffic. Exactly. Yes. Especially you're... during weekends or like busy seasons. I We advise not going during Christmas. Christmas actually because it's packed. Okay. Yes. It's gonna be packed of people. Yes. Next resort I want to talk about is my personal favorite resort, and that is Haiwan. Haiwan. Yes. So Haiwan is let's say 
three hours away. But the reason it's my favorite one is because, again, when all the slopes are open, they have very good slopes. Mm. But the facilities are very modern. I think this is a very, like, everything is pretty new. And they have so much yes, as well. Yes, coffee shops, restaurants. On every hilltop. Yes. I know it makes a difference when there's someone greeting you in every corner and when they're like, excited as but well. Very, very welcoming. Yes, good, very welcoming. Very good hospitality. Especially for a foreigner, because when we arrived the first time to Haiwan, we had no idea where to go, where to buy the tickets, and there was instantly a guy mm. working there who came to us and was like, can I help you? Where do you want mm. to go? In English. Mm. Mm. And also, of all the resorts, I think this one has the cheapest and best accommodation, like price quality wise. Mm. It looks like there's a lot of stuff infrastructure wise, mm. like a lot of restaurants, a lot of coffee shops to choose from. I mean, obviously, because it's farther away, less people go there, go there because it is it is a three hour car ride. Mm. Yeah, mm. Lo in in interesting facilities here and there, riding around in gondolas everywhere. Yes, gondolas, when it's cold, gondolas is the way to go, especially when it's windy. But they don't work when the wind is too Oh, yeah, too yeah, far. on oh, Sunday. It's not yeah. windy though, yeah. so I don't know why they close it. And then the last resort is Phoenix Park. I like Phoenix's slopes. Yes, the slopes are nice. If, if, at least for, for a snowboarder. Yeah, when everything is open, it's a huge resort. It's also 18 slopes. And yeah. we could see it from the ski lift that there were still so many yeah. like, parts of the resort that we I'm can access. I'm pretty excited about it. Yes. It's also, also the one that's the closest to Seoul. Well, yes. I mean, Yongpyeong and Phoenix are Just relatively like 10 similar. 10 kilometers from each other or but something. But technically, Phoenix is slightly closer. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited about going there. Accommodation wise, I think it was the hardest one to find affordable accommodation. Mm. A lot of Koreans go there to spend the day. In, not everyone of the family skis, so they spend time in the resort. Mm. But we don't need that. So you just need to. A bed we just to need, sleep. Yeah, we just need a bed to sleep. Mm. So it was the the hardest one to find. Mm. Facilities wise. I mean, giving them the benefit of doubt that maybe the season is not at its top and not a lot of things are open yet. But when we went there, we, other than the cafe, overpriced cafeteria, we had only one Mandu yes, restaurant. Yeah. I would bring my own food, yeah. to be honest. So if you're going with people who don't ski or snowboard, I wouldn't go to Phoenix. But down the road, there's an alpaca cafe. Oh, and Port how is it Denote. far from, from the... Yeah, road. it's like a kilometer, you need a car. Yeah. But if you're choosing your resort's options based on the availability of alpacas, it's important to note. Yes, because because, because that's, that's the key decision point <laughs> for us, if there's an alpaca cafe nearby. I would say stick maybe to something that's closer to Seoul than any of the three. Yes. If you're gonna be stuck there for the whole day and you just On the realize, beginner slope. Yeah. Especially. That they're not the most exciting in the world to begin with. Then right. then you it might not be the greatest day of your life. <laughs> Where and uh, whereas there's some really great resorts much around, closer. Much closer yeah. around Seoul. True. I think based on like food and stuff, I think the cheapest ones is Haiwan. Yeah. And then Phoenix Park and then Yongpyeong. Yeah. And I've looked at the prices for rental tickets. Yeah. The most expensive one is Haiwan. Oh, really? Yes. The cheapest one is that, Phoenix Park. Yeah. And then Yongpyeong is in the middle. Mm. Um, and rental, every, every place is pretty similar for rentals. And it's, then. The, the, the slow pass is the, the one that's a deal breaker. Yes. Yeah. It's quite a big difference. I think for a full day, um, high one is a hundred thousand. Oh wow! Yes, I think if you're looking price-wise for like the full package, you're probably gonna get the cheapest deal in Phoenix Park. Mm, for I a think day. so too. But not very diverse. We have to. <laughs> yeah, you don't have a lot of food options. I think Yongpyeong and High One would equal out. Yeah, I, th I think I think they're and they're pretty pricey. Like in Korea, in, like skiing or going to resorts in general is considered kind of like a high end yes. luxury mm -hmm. thing. Maybe not the, as luxury as golf, but pretty high close. Up there, right? Yeah. So so it is it is a pretty pricey event. Right. But 
that kind of uh, circles back to having that season pass because if you do it really evens Brings out the cost and you can really spend the whole season at a going. very low price I think all, especially Haiwan and Yongpyeong are more. They're pre-COVID. They were. They had a lot of traffic for foreign yeah. tourists, so they have the facilities and they have English-speaking staff. And the signs are in English. And as the well. signs are in but English. But I think Phoenix Park as well. I only have a comparison of ski slopes in in Poland, and I think. Oh, that was back in Poland. It was back in Poland, but I think it was like similar to Korea in the sense that there were that we don't have that many ski slopes and they're very short. They're not like right. the Alps where you can ski for days. That is very true. The first time I came to Korea skiing, I was like, what is this 10 slopes? And only like 500 meters long? Because I come from like skiing in the Alps and like Marta said, you ski, you can ski for days. And, yeah. And like, and have a different slope every single day. Yeah. So I was like, and the landscape is different because in the Alps, everything is white. But I do notice a very big difference because in Europe, I was like leisure skiing. We were not focused on technique because we were just like enjoying the landscape with the family. Yeah. But now, because there's such a small amount of slopes and you do them over and over again, I really started practicing technique and carving and mm -hmm. short turn. So my level of skiing has massively improved because I'm in Korea. Mm -hmm. And you see that as well with the people here, people who ski like they intensely, ski yeah. they ski very well. Their technique is very well because that's like the thing that they do here. All right, everyone. So this was our video about the best ski resorts in Korea. We hope that you will be able to visit one day and maybe go to one of these resorts. Don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on that notification bell and we'll be back with more Korea content. See you again next time. Bye. Ciao.